Okay, so our objective today, oops, go to black, is to understand the difference between a relation and a function. That's the main thing. And then we're also going to talk about how to um, uh, learn how to find values of functions. And we've, you've actually been practicing this. We just haven't used maybe the nomenclature. So what I'm going to do is go through an example, and we're going to use that example to help us see if we can come up with what makes a function different than a relation. Okay. So I've got a scenario of a teacher asked students in her class, three members at a time, what their favorite color was. And so what I'm going to do is share the results out. Now, the way that the results are going to be shared is called a map. Okay, so when we're doing a mapping, we're showing a relationship between one category to another category. So we're going to break these into domain and in range. So the domain is going to be the name of the student, and the range is going to be, in this particular case, what was their favorite color. Now, they are not in any particular order, these particular things. So in, when we do mapping, we take our domain values, in this case, Amber, Tim, and Kayla, Oops, if I spell it correctly, oops, go away. We are going to kind of put them in their own little box. The three colors that these three students mentioned happen to be blue, red, and green. So when I did a mapping of their responses, Amber said blue was her favorite color. Tim said red was his favorite color. Kayla said green was her favorite color. So it went directly straight across, kind of like when we were doing our charts where we had the X and its corresponding Y were right across from each other. Now, according to the rules, this is a function. Okay. Liam, keep writing. Now, I'm not going to write D, domain, and range out. I'm just going to use D and R for the next two. Oops, sorry. For the next group of three students that she spoke with, they were Alonzo, uh, Melina, and Chen. So with those three students... Their favorite colors, so the range, would be blue and green. So when I map who chose each color, Alonso said blue was his favorite color. Melina also said blue was her favorite color, but Chen liked green. Now, according to the rules, this is also called a function. She asked three more students. We had Elena. Kenny, question? Um, is that an N or M? Where, honey? In the domain. Melina? Melina? Uh huh. That's an M. Okay. So we have Elena, Hallie, and Tony are the last three students that she spoke to. And they gave us their color choices, blue, red, and green. And when the teacher mapped who chose which color, Alina said, I like blue and I like red. Hallie said, I like red. Tony said, I like green. According to the rules, this last scenario is not a function.
So can you see a difference between the first two scenarios where those relations were functions and the last one where it said this relation is not a function? It's a relation still, but there's, it's not a function. Faith, what do you think? So when you have one domain that chooses two ranges or pairs up with two ranges, that's what eliminates it from being a function. Or from being a function. So let's write down the definition of function. So it's a relation. Remember, relation is just a set of uh, data, and most of the times it's ordered pairs. So it's a relation in which... Each member of the domain is paired, and here comes the key part, with exactly one member in the range. So in that last example, Elena paired with two range numbers, not exactly one. So that's what took that third situation from being a function to just being a relation. Okay. Now, again, just to reiterate, mapping it shows a connection between a domain value and its range value. So we're going to practice this notion of mapping to help us visualize if it's a function or not, because it's kind of a tough situation. A lot of the kids in the Math 8a class have a hard time understanding a function versus a relation. So uh, the mapping is really helpful with that. Now, <clears throat> let's look at the second scenario where she asked the three kids what their, um, th their favorite colors were, but there were only two answers. How can that be possible when there's three kids? Why wouldn't there be three answers there? Faith? Because two chose the same color. So notice that it didn't say blue, blue, green, or blue, blue green, green. So that's the reason why I told you guys you can't double up an answer that repeats in a domain or an answer that repeats in a range because we want to see everything pairs uniquely with one thing. And if we double it up, you'll, you would always find, oh, he pairs, he pairs, he pairs. But it's got to make sure that we only write everything one time. We don't repeat ourselves. Okay? So that's part of what you're going to do is you're going to be looking at information you're going to create a mapping of it, and you're going to determine whether you have a, just a relation or you have a function. So the key thing with a function is that each member of the domain has exactly one number it's paired with in the range. Everybody good with that? Okay. Next, we talked about this in the past, but I want to go over it again. So I'm going to give you another scenario. And this is a person who um, mows lawns. And so they came up with an equation that determines how much money that person makes when they mow a lawn. Okay? And the equation they came up with was this. So if I rewrote this with va uh, variables x and y, what would the equation look like if I used the variables x and y when we wrote this? Oh, certainly can't be the faith hour today. Rochelle? Ooh, careful. Careful. Mackenzie? Y equals 2x. Y equals 2x. This is what our, most of our equations, remember when we wrote them as equations, we wrote them in slope-intercept form, and it would look something like that. This one ha doesn't happen to have uh, an extra value. It doesn't have a y-intercept value. Okay? So in our scenario here, N is going to represent the number of lawns mowed. 
and M is going to represent the money made. Okay. <clears throat> so each of those variables has a secondary name. Kenny, you writing this down? Okay. The number of lawns that are mowed is called an independent variable. And what that means is I can mow as many lawns as I want. That's whatever I want. It's my choice, right? So it can be any variable, or any value, I should say. Once I give a value to the n, there's only one answer I can get for the m, because I do the math and I get it. So m is dependent upon what I plug in for n. So m is called a dependent variable. And that's because it depends upon the value. That's a terrible way to write that. Try that again. Of the other variable. So when n is 2, what's m in that situation? If n is 2, what's m? Yeah. If n is 2, we end up with 4 for m. But if n is 5, what do I get for m? I get 10. So that value of m depends upon what the value of n was. That's what we mean by dependent variable, okay? So you, you may have some questions where you have to figure out dependent and independent. All right, last thing. Let's talk about what does a function look like. So the way to write a func function We use f, we put parentheses, we put x in there, and then we have a function on the other side, some sort of expression that also includes x. So this part over here is called the function, we read it this way, the function of x. It's the answer you get. It's what comes out. It's also called output. Or what we're used to calling it is range. It's dependent upon what the x value is. So what this tells you with the x that's in the parentheses says when you look on the other side, your expression has x in it. So the variables have to match on both sides of the equation. Cleo. Well, it's a function that this particular function is 15 times x. And if you think about when we were doing our equations, y equals 15x, what did the 15 represent in that case? Not the output. What's the 15 represent? Susie uh, works in a shoe store, and she makes $15 an hour. It's that constant rate of pay. Remember, most of our equations that were the function the relations we've been graphing, there's been this constant going on. This is the slope of our equation, remember? So it shows what that constant rate of change is going to be. So this represents the amount of money she makes per hour. The independent variable is how many hours she works. The dependent variable is the amount of money she ends up making altogether. Okay? So this part over here, this is called the input or domain. Okay? So f of x equals 15x is the same as saying y equals 15x. It's the same, means the same thing. Faith. 
This you wouldn't, but here's what they're going to ask you. And we'll go, has everybody gotten this? Because I want to go on the next screen. Almost done. Kenny, are you good? Yeah, I got it. Okay, Bree, you're still writing stuff. All right, so what they're going to ask you to do on homework is ask for the value of a function. And what they're saying is, given a domain value, calculate its range value. So let me give you an example of what that's going to look like. So given a domain value, calculate its range value. So they're going to give you a piece of information. Because, yeah, you're right, you can't solve it the way that it's written. So here's what you're going to see. Find f at negative 3 if the function oops, at x is equal to 2x plus 1. So basically what they want you to do is instead of writing x, every place you see x, you're going to replace it with negative 3. So we had negative th x over here and at x next to the 2. And then we just start solving. So what's 2 times negative 3? Negative 6. Negative 6. What's negative 6 plus 1? So our ultimate answer would be f at negative 3 equals negative 5. So the function at negative 3 is negative 5. That's for this particular, because that's the only question they asked. Now what they may do is they may give you a whole list of domain values. So this is a domain value. So if they give you a list of domain values, then you have to do each one of them. So basically this is the first step in you creating a chart and figuring out ordered pairs that make that function satisfied, that they make it true. When I plug in negative 3, I get out negative 5. That's one ordered pair that's in this graph, and I can graph that, okay? So what they do is they talk about the same thing we did when we were solving, trying to graph equations, where we had an x column, we had a column with the equation in it where you did the math, and then you had a y column, and then you can write them as an ordered pair. Basically, they show you the similar thing that you're going to do on your homework tonight. So your homework is going to ask you, here's this. They're going to tell you what to put in for that. They're going to, you're going to write the function. So this one, we would say f of x equals 2x plus 1. And then the answer is what you get for the f of x. And you just would create a chart from that. They may ask you to graph it. I think all of these are just creating the charts and then stating the domain and range. So where are the domains in that chart? Yeah, it's the x. This would be your domain. And where's the range? Where is it? The f? Where in my chart would we have see the domain or the range? Kenny? On the right. It would be the far right over here. So this would be your range value. So when you're picking up your domain and range, the only thing different from this chart and the one we've done for the last two days is we didn't do any calculations because they gave us the ordered pairs. We are creating the ordered pairs this time. Clear. So they're going to give us the domain and we have to figure out They're going to give you a domain, perhaps, or they may say choose any domain you want and then figure out the ranges. Okay. Yeah, you could make up your own. Yeah. So you're going to do uh, the page 290, which is the guided practice, and then the page 291, which is the first page of the independent practice for your homework tonight. Okay. And we've got just a couple minutes left. So good luck with your homework.